welcome back guys so we're at the tail end of harvest now so as you can might be able to see on my right hand side uh, the rest of the wheat paddocks uh, that have already been seeded and back in oats of course being wheat and then into oats for our rotation uh, these oats will be eaten off by calves or heifers uh, as winter feed so it is currently early to mid-March and so we're right on time for our schedule just moseying up the road now slowly up to the last three paddocks we've got to do there's about 18 hectares here to do all crappie farmers go through this we've calculated out how much seed we need and of course we overlap or do an extra couple of rounds or extra rounds in the headlands and we may have under budgeted unfortunately but I've completely loaded up the drill hopefully I should get two paddocks done and then we have an option of putting in some autumn wheat for this other third paddock our drilling rate is about 125 uh, kgs per hectare so we are throwing these oats in no fertilizer with it we've already burnt off so that's enough natural fertilizer to keep the plant going but we will put on a little bit of urea later on and we got 60 mils of rain overnight so there won't be a lot of dust which is absolutely perfect to me really the soil needed a good drink as the wheat we don't irrigate for so long uh, to shut the wheat plant down and so that soil is pretty dry but there was a surprising amount of moisture way underneath um, but right so I'll open this gate and we'll crack into it absolutely scorched just absolutely perfect burn off couldn't have wished for better really so that is really key because obviously like I've explained earlier that the stubble if it doesn't get burnt off properly will mount up under the drill with the tines get pulled up and just start breaking things but also popping hoses off and binding up and digging holes or digging lines down the paddock just just making a mess really so it's really key that we got a really good burn off and i could wish for better so bloody perfect really to start off the paddock <coughs> excuse me i just uh, do the outside round just one big loop no stopping no backing in for the second round i'll back in and take off then get to the next goal back and take off same for the third and then the fourth you can loop around in the corner and then head back out uh, in one motion going anti-clockwise around this paddock the right hand wing was hanging over what was the fire break so that fire break is six meters wide our drill is five meters wide and so is what I'll have to do is lift the drill up because that soil is so soft now not only because of the rain but because it was a fire break the drill will sink down into it and so we'll be burying that seed a little bit too deep for my liking or our liking so it's what i'll do is at the ends of finishing these paddocks i'll lift the drill hopefully i'll still have some seed to do the job but i'll lift the drill and then i'll do all of the outside rounds so that right hand wing when i had it floating over the edge I lifted that of course it was quite easy it was just um, a little thread that I moved and which lifted uh, the wing up effectively so 
that was quite easy to do but that was just to hang it over by a meter and that would take up uh, the that uh, gap that would be effectively made now if I was to not lift the drill <coughs> excuse me if I was not to lift the drill when I was doing the outside round it would yeah sink down put the seat too low but also would bind up with all the straw and the crap so just thought I'd lay that one and screen I am watching them so on the TV obviously I've got the seed bin and then the fertilizer bin I can switch between the two bins and see how much seed is left or fertilizer and then on this little screen here or monitor you can see the rates that we are putting in or the RPMs of the two motors that are in the seat bins or at the bottom of the seat bins also the fan speed as well so that's quite key as it is of course an air seater and we want to know what our fan speed is to how much air we're blowing down the tube uh, this drill we got it uh, from Rata uh, they are a manufacturing company uh, just 15 minutes south of us really good drill really happy with it unfortunately they only made two of them uh, so this is one I believe the other one is at last time I heard it's a fairly and it was made into a six meter wide one this one here has been fitted to uh, four inch row spacings so they're quite tight I know it's not very good for doing wheat but we do slow down our drilling rate just to somewhat accommodate the uh, tines being so close together but obviously we're doing such a range of different crops in our rotation that uh, having it four inches is jack of all trades master of none kind of you know row spacing so it seems to do a great job for us um, the poor thing is needing some attention those little wheels at the back they are uh, starting to slog out uh, not the physical wheel bearings but where they pivot in the middle is starting to wear out uh, there are grease nipples there but there's only so much grease you can pump into them uh, with no seals and they just they just get slogged out so as you can guess with the tine drill we have it because we have a lot of stones here uh, this drill just don't seem to work in this ground but tine drill tends to flick the stone out of the way and then uh, puts the seed down into the soil so that's why we have a tine drill over a disc drill 